Hello again. This is SCLC Today TV. I'm your host, Maynard Eaton. And just back from Chicago is our president and CEO, Dr. Charles Steele Jr. Dr. Steele, you were there to talk about racial climate in the country and also leadership, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Uh, absolutely. Um, we had a great trip in Chicago. And I thank God my wife was able to go with me. And matter of fact, I gave out three speeches in Chicago. Once people discovered that we were going to be there, then there were other organizations asking me to come and speak for them in terms of what we do. Also, I uh, did a lecture from Chicago by Zoom, via Zoom, uh, at Laolo University, uh, one of their PhD programs dealing with executive uh, leadership. And that was awesome in its own right. But you're right, uh, man. And, uh, the, the whole country is very excited about the history and what's taking place within our country. And I, I, I couldn't help but talk about uh, uh, eight years ago, uh, and I want people to keep this in their mind, uh, June the 25th, 2013, when Section 4 and Section 5 was gutted from the 1965 Voter Rights Act. Uh, Sons of Hank Sanders, Fire Your Rose, and myself, and uh, no more than 40, 50 more people, 60 at the most. We were banging on the doors of the U.S. Supreme Court in a decision making uh, debate that they were having not to gut it. And there were so many folks that just didn't understand what was going on. So, eight years later, and I talked about this in Chicago, and I was asked this after I spoke to the class at uh, Laola University, New Orleans. Uh, they asked me the question, why politics can't help our folks? Why politics can't help our folks? And we didn't get it on the, uh, not bashing anyone. We haven't gotten uh, any, any form of reparation. We haven't gotten any economic uh, uh, support to go in business and to alleviate the impoverishment situation that we have. Regardless who's in office, we have not gotten it. So that's what we're talking about. And people are very disturbed. President Steele, offering guidance, uh, insight into leadership. What are the key things you said to some of those students? What was your key element about leadership? Well, first of all, I was telling them that you have to have integrity. You don't become a, a leader by oxmosis. Uh, leadership is one that is actually a calling like a ministry. You don't have to be in the pulpit to be a leader. Uh, it's, it's, it's a calling. And people know the truism of leadership when it comes to the table or when it come in the room. A leader does not have to say anything. And uh, you know, I'm proud to say, yeah, I'm a leader. I take second to no, no one, nobody, because I do what a leader must do. I build relationships, I have to raise money, I have to make sure everybody's paid, I have to pay the bills. That's a leader. And you still have to take care of your home front. So, and being a leader is more than just picking up a sign and trying to make the six o'clock news. I don't care if I never make the news because the word will get out in terms of the truism of leadership. You don't have to be on the six o'clock news. If you get on the news, the news is gonna try to give you 30 seconds and present you the way they want to present you. And most time, it's not you who you are as a leader. God, Why are you smiling? Why are you because, smiling? Because there's so many young people think getting on the news or on social media and the following makes you a leader. And that's, that's just publicity, is it not? It is. I like that. It's publicity. And it lasts, what, 24 hours at the most. Grandstanding. 24 hours, it's over. People don't even know what the um, substance of what you're trying to say if you're not in the trenches on an ongoing basis and forever and committing your life to it. When I see the camera come, I try to go the other way because it, it's not about being on the camera. And I don't want to say things on the camera that I say to the folks. You know, that's what's wrong with us as a people. We tell everything we know on the camera. People who are serious about their strategy do not confide looking at a camera about the strategy or where we're going. I believe in the element of surprise. Can I share one more element here? Because uh, 
many of the public don't know, we have our disagreements over that because as your communications director, I'm always trying to get you on TV or in the newspaper. And you're saying, oh, I don't necessarily need that, man. So we, we've had our moments of disagreement because of what you just said. You don't necessarily need it or want to say certain things uh, to, the, to the public or to the camera. That's right. It's not good always to, to just voice your opinion uh, openly, not just the media, but to the public without having any type of consideration of where we go from here collectively and collaboratively. And then you just shoot out a hot air just to be on TV. Well, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of TV talk, a lot of some would say hot air between preachers and so-called civil rights leaders about uh, the All-Star Game leaving Atlanta, but also about the lack of protests with the Masters, which reeks of Southern heritage and Southern tradition, the Masters in Augusta not being protested at all. What do you see about that? Uh, is, is it cool that we're not protesting the Masters? Well, it takes a lot of work, Mr. Eaton. And many times when the camera's gone, we don't want to work. I mean, we work running our miles and getting in front of the camera. But after that, you got to go, when the cameras leave, you got to be totally committed and hope that the cameras don't come and have an impact without the cameras. Um, the Masters is very difficult in that the Masters itself in, a, in Augusta makes all of their decision, not the PGA, Professional Golf Association. The Masters make that decision. That's that's a good boy club. I don't care if Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods, uh, Lee Elder, who was the first black to participate, they have the history right. of racism within the Masters. It's embedded. So if you're gonna take on the Masters, it's a long haul and you don't wait till the Masters come, you do it over the year and years. Some also have argued, I heard one preacher tell me that, well, the Masters is a symbol of the South, but it's also uh, a big payday for the black folks in Augusta and the surrounding area. So we well, don't, pay don't want to hurt. Payday for black folks uh, uh, in terms of uh, not standing up for what's right is a cop out. You have to sacrifice. And sacrificing the money, I've sacrificed the money all my life. You know, <laughs> I always sacrifice the money, going to jail, picking it, and uh, taking it to the edge where most folks don't go. And I will always go. Uh, it's always been a sacrifice. So we can't use that. That's a cop out. You got to go without uh, meals. You got to go without uh, giving your children uh, what you think you should be giving them. But it's also an opportunity to educate them that in order for others to succeed, we must sacrifice not having this house, not having this car, not having the first class uh, accommodations within our family because God has given me the purpose of sacrifice. And that's what I remember when my wife was telling me, he wants you to sacrifice, but he also wants you to enjoy. That's why Dr. King was in the Holiday Inn. And then he was asked to come over to the Lorraine Motel. After all of that work, you do want to enjoy some things, but it's a sacrifice. Speaking of sacrifice, uh, the George Floyd trial, uh, some say he sacrificed his life to, to ignite another movement within the United States. Uh, there are also some who argue, Dr. Steele, that testimony reveals the cops aren't standing behind the blue shield. They're telling on the uh, officer on trial there. Well, I, I think uh, at some point you can have a shield, you can have a badge, you can have the honor of policing within your background, but you're still a human being. And, and, and guess what's so beautiful about this thing as a Christian? We're all going to leave here. You know, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be captain is or police that you got to give accountability. So when you are Christian and when you believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, as I always say, then you have a certain amount of responsibility. Uh SCLC, one of the missions is 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 responsibility to the leadership of young people and folks of all ages and, and to bring about the eradication of racism. Wherever it raises its ugly head. That's the mission statement of SCLC. So hopefully, as an individual and a person of the Trinity, of the Trinity that these police officers know that they have their badge on, 
but they have to die too. And they have to be accountable to whoever they believe in. And hopefully they believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. From what you've seen and what you've heard during the trial, was George Floyd murdered in your opinion? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I don't care the, the people trying to say, well, say people, the opposition, uh, uh, the defendants trying to say that uh, he, he was on opioid and that type of thing, or drugs, or, or some pain killing type of uh, medication that he was addicted to. It doesn't matter if the man was just sloppy drunk. You don't kill people just because of those type of behavior or somebody disrespecting a police officer and, and not doing the protocol aspect of respectability. You don't just kill and shoot or put your knee on somebody and kill them. That was murder, undebatably so. Let's end this on a good note, or at least good news seemingly. Uh, today, uh, HUD Secretary Marsha Fudge says of the $1.9 trillion uh, stimulus bill, $5 billion will go toward the homeless, rental assistance, affordable housing, and that some 130,000 people, as she promises, will be off the streets within 18 months. That sounds great. Do you think that can happen? I think it can. Uh, at least it starts with conversation and it starts with being in the budget. Um, I commend the current administration uh, for bringing this to, to uh, fruition of of, of, of saying that they are sensitive to the needs of people who are without uh, food, clothing, and shelter uh, in terms of, of the guarantees of, of democracy. So many times uh, this government has turned its back on its people and we have loved this government for so many years, but the, the government has never shown any love to us. And it's time out for that. Um, people need to forget about their positions and represent those who put them in office. So many people are in a people business don't care about people. But this shows that this administration, President Biden and his administration are really sensitive to the needs of those who are less fortunate. And I commend them. Well, we're sensitive because as you well know, right outside our front door on Auburn Avenue, all too too many people sleep on the streets. And I know you talked about that a lot, how that hurts you and bothers you. Now, perhaps there's a way out. I, 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 it's not a, a holistic approach that's going to take us to the next level of getting people off the streets and, and out of these uh, cubby holes and, and uh, alley holes and doorways, even our doorways. And As you know, uh, man, uh, we have homeless people all around us. Uh, using the restroom, so come uh, to our door without clothes on. <coughs> Excuse me, but it's a mental, it's a it's a it's a mental destabilizer as well, and uh, they need a whole different approach. Dr. King said we need the medical aspect as well as being compensated monthly because you are a citizen of the United States of America. When people cannot take care of themselves, it's the responsibility of this government, regardless of what anyone says. The government has that responsibility. Thank President Biden and his administration for at least bringing about the first conversation with implementation of correcting this problem by realizing, not holistically, but realizing there is a problem. Then you can go to work and start resolving some of these issues. On behalf of SCLC Chairman Dr. Bernard Lafayette, this has been our president, Dr. Charles Steele Jr. I'm Maynard Eaton. This is SCLC Today TV. We'll see you next week.